Hi, I'm Kimberly Washburn, Curator of Education at the Florence County Museum. Welcome to Family Day at Home. Today, we're going to be making a mola. A mola is a traditional blouse or fabric panel created by the Kuna tribe, or the indigenous people of Panama. These brightly colored textiles are pieces of fabric layered together. The top layer of fabric is cut to reveal sections, the colored sections below. We're going to make a mola together today out of paper in the style of the Kuna tribe. Let's get started creating our paper mola in the style of the Kuna tribe of Panama. First, you're going to want to gather a few things from your family day at home kit. You're going to need your five sheets of colored construction paper and your glue stick. You're also gonna to need to gather a couple of things from around the house. You'll need a pair of scissors and a pencil. Really any writing utensil will do. Pencil, pen, crayon, anything you can write with will make this a little easier. The Kuna people in their molas primarily use subject matter like plants or animals. Today we're going to make a mola that's going to use a bird as the subject matter. I want to start by drawing my bird on one of the colors of sheets of paper. And the color that I choose is going to be sort of the base of the animal. So it's going to be the main color of the animal or the plant. So start with the color that you want to be the main color. I chose yellow for this. And I've drawn my bird right on the paper. Now, if you don't want to draw directly on your construction paper, if you want to practice on scrap paper first, that's totally fine. You could also practice on scrap paper and then cut it out and use it to trace with. I've actually done that and then I've added some markings onto my template just to help me know exactly what I want it to look like when it's finished. <clears throat> so this is sort of a guide for me. So I'm just going to put that in the corner of my paper as a guide and I'm going to take my bird outline that I've drawn on my yellow paper and I'm just going to cut that out. Remember to be careful with your scissors as you're cutting. If something's tricky to cut out, don't be afraid to ask a grown-up at your house for assistance. And I'm just cutting out the outline. Now I want to make sure that once I've cut this out, that I save all these scraps that I'm cutting off because I'll definitely use those later. I'm going to finish cutting out my bird and I like to cut out the lines so that I don't see the lines on my finished animal. So I'm cutting the lines away. If you've got big pieces of paper hanging off that are tricky to maneuver, then just cut them right off. You don't need that background to stay whole. And just one more little area to cut. It's a small area, so it's tricky. It's easiest if you keep your design simple. An animal that has lots and lots of little tiny details might be really hard to cut out. And you also want to try to make it fill up the paper pretty well. It doesn't need to go all the way to the edges. In fact, you want some room on the edges, but you do want it to be big enough that it's going to be able to be seen and easy to cut out. Okay, so I've cut out my bird shape. And next, I'm going to decide which color I would like this to sit on. So I might test it out. Okay, yellow on red, on the green, on the blue. I think I like the way that, and I know I want to save my black paper for my background, so I've already decided that. So I think that I like the way that the yellow looks on the red. So I'm going to move these sheets of paper out of the way. And I'm going to use my glue stick and just put glue all over the back of your animal. Now here's another trick. If you didn't cut out your lines, let's say you have a lot of pencil markings on here and you don't want to look at those, then put the glue on the side with the pencil markings. Your animal will be faced the opposite direction, but that doesn't really matter. So that's just a little trick. If you've got lots of pencil markings, don't worry about erasing those markings, just 
put the glue on the side with the marks. This glue goes on purple, but it does dry clear. So I'm not too worried if I get some glue on there. And I'm gonna stick down my bird right onto the red paper. This bird is a toucan. <clears throat> okay, now the next step is going to be to cut out around this bird, but leave a little bit of the red paper so that we can see it. We want that mola effect of having color layered over color. Now you can use your pencil to trace an area around it, just like I'm doing here, but you don't have to. If you just wanna eyeball it, you can do that too. These little details are gonna be probably too small for me to cut into, so I'm just gonna kind of make those shapes a little more simple, simplify those shapes a little bit. <clears throat> so I've drawn that line, but the rest of it I'm just gonna kind of freehand. <clears throat> so here we go. I'm just gonna cut this out. Remember to cut out your lines if you don't want to see them. Can't really glue on the back side of this one, so. Make sure to cut away those lines or you'll have to spend a little time erasing. This part, I did not draw the line, so I'm just gonna have to eyeball it to create a border. And I might make this a little smaller just to even things out a little bit and to cut that line away. Okay, so I'm saving all these scraps. I've got some scraps, but I'm definitely gonna save them because I'm gonna use those scraps to create the details on my animal. Now I have yellow and I have red and I wanna put one more layer behind this. So I need to decide what layer that's going to be. I have green or blue. I think I like the way that the blue looks. So I'm gonna do the same thing, put the glue on the back. Might wanna have a little baby wipe or something handy that can help you. Get your hands clean when you're doing this. Okay. Now, if I try to draw lines around this guy, you'll notice that I'll come to a point where I can't put a border because I'm at the edge of my paper, and that's okay. I'm just going to cut out as best I can around him, and I'm not gonna draw the lines this time. I can see where I need to cut. If it's somewhere that it's really, really tight to cut, then I'm not gonna worry about getting in there. I'll just leave that paper. Again, if I've got paper that's tricky to maneuver, I can just cut it right off. Those scraps will be useful later. <clears throat> okay, and there's my bird three layers of color around my bird. Now, remember, I said I wanted to put this on a black background, so I'm going to get the black paper, position it the way that I want it. I actually want this guy a little up toward the top here. So I'm gonna just decide where I want him on my paper and then glue him down. And I'm gluing him down. His leg is a little loose here. Might add a little more glue. Okay. So now we have a good start to our mola. <clears throat> now, we're going to add a little bit of detail here. 
and we're going to start adding things like the inside of the beak. We're going to add feathers and colors and stripes and geometric patterns, just like the Kuna women of Panama do on their mola. So I want to use this green color to create a wing for my bird. Again, you can draw these things out or you can just go straight to cutting. Whatever makes you feel more comfortable. Sometimes if something's tricky to draw, then I'll definitely draw it out first. Other times, I just cut it out. So that looks like a good beak. And I want to create a couple of layers of color for the eye with my bird. cutting out of my paper. All these small bits, we can use the scraps for. So I like the way that that looks. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these things down. I recommend kind of playing around with the shapes and colors before you decide to glue it down. Make sure you like what you have before you do any gluing. Okay, and I'm going to my original design right here with these sort of half circle shapes, that's not gonna fit on my finished design the way that I have it, but I could put some stripes there, some striped pieces of paper, um, or some other design to highlight that area. And I'm gonna cut out some long oval shapes. These long oval shapes are really common in MOLA. So they're almost like lines, but they're actually little ovals. I'm just gonna cut out a bunch of these and then I'll decide where I want them to go. You could even layer these. You could put yellow on top of blue. If I did a really skinny one. Could put it on top to create a layer kind of like that and then add that layer into my finished work we'll come back in just a minute when we have a little bit more done okay so i have finished up with all the cutting and i've glued most of these pieces down but i'm just finishing these finishing touches up adding a little bit of glue. It's definitely helpful to have a scrap sheet of paper or something underneath your work so that if you get a little bit of glue on the table surface that it's not going to mess anything up. I'm just adding the last bits of glue. Oh, not enough on that one. You can keep layering these sheets of paper, these little pieces of paper to your heart's content. So you can add as little um, or as many as you would like to add. This one has lots and lots of details in it, but I'll show you another in just a moment that has maybe fewer details, but is equally beautiful. As much time and attention as you wanna put into this, you can. <clears throat> so you can see that my paper mola is completely covered, my background is covered, and I've got lots of different layers, lots of different paper layers, mimicking that fabric mola created by the Kuna women of Panama. Let me show you one more. This is another one that I created, a little bit simpler, not as much detail, um, but again, equally beautiful. I hope you have a good time cutting out paper and constructing your own paper mola in the style of the Kuna women of Panama. <laughs>